Have you noticed that smartphones have grown in the price a lot for less and less improvement with each new model? But do you really need to spend that much? Or can you cheat and buy cheap offerings and get similar results? The same trend is going on across all our planetary game. PC and laptops with small RAM and SSD space amount. GPUs with only 8 gigs of VRAM. Tablets with 64 gigs of memory. What if you spend whopping $1300 on a phone? Will it feel a lot different from the cheapest phones that I can find? But it must still be reasonable and comfortable to use. Initially I wanted to test Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, one of the most expensive phones on the planet, versus my old Mi 9 phone. But ocean waves took my phone into the deep dark abyss. It had 4K 60 frames per second video, very nice photo capabilities, and you can easily find it from 60 to 80 dollars used. So I started to search, what can I test it against my new Samsung phone? And after hours of research, I realized that it was all alone the whole time near me. This is my wife's Mi 9 Lite. And even though it was initially $250, now you can easily find it somewhere between $20 to $40 in nice conditions. Of course, it has less horsepower than whopping $60 Mi 9 in terms of processor and cameras. But the less apples to apples it will be, the better. Also, we are not comparing fruits, but phones. Imagine comparing the same two fruits. What a stupid and boring that review will be. Let's start with the most important topic for most people. Cameras. Let's start with the video quality. First of all, I wanted to test front selfie camera in the extreme low light conditions, but I completely screwed the settings and shot everything in 720p on the Mi 9 Lite. I thought that Samsung in 4K will completely obliterate all cheap phone, but only to realize that specs on paper are not everything. Codecs and algorithms are more important. I will argue that 720p in this cheap Chinese phone completely humiliates Samsung's front-facing selfie and standard camera. I am using third-party app for the Mi 9 Lite. I have explained it in my previous videos. That day this app was unsupported by Samsung and Android 14. But the day after, developer made firmware update and unleashed the full shackled Korean powers. So I had to reshoot everything again. Let the image quality speak for itself. We'll only say that I was more surprised by the abilities of this cheap phone. It was not bad, and in some cases even arguably better.
let's quickly talk about handling experience, look and durability. Of course, Samsung uses nicely built aluminum with sprinkles of titanium. It has better Gorilla Armor glass, S Pen inside, but this Mi 9 Lite looks and feels very comfortable in the hand and never got warm. Samsung uses more power, but sometimes I want to blow in it. It gets so warm. My wife dropped this phone in the case with cheap protective glass countless of times, but it has no signs of cracks, scratches, only slight indication from taking it in and out of the pocket for all these years. I feel insecure to place this expensive Samsung on anything harder than towel. How are they behaving in photo tests? Let's find out. Let images speak loudly than words. I used it in auto mode, like 99% of people will do, occasionally swapping it to night mode, in which Samsung operates with all camera models. The same is true to the portrait mode. Of course, for the first glance, Samsung is a lot better in low light, but sometimes it can do these weird moves, so I won't call it very reliable. Also, Samsung's selfie makes consistently worse photos. I rechecked it several times, but $30 used phone completely annihilates Samsung in this regard.
as for the raw powers and performance. Let's use a couple of benchmarks. Here is Antutu benchmarks, Geekbench, and let's play a couple of games. Because real life use is more important than abstract numbers. This Diablo Immoral cash grab scam. Of course, we can talk all day about in depth features S Pen, Multitask, Dex Mode, Quick Share versus Me Share, and on and on. But this will take forever. And the point is not about all the bells and whistles, but rather will you feel $1,270 of difference? And answer is heck no! Corporations spend billions of dollars and use psychology and even bots in the comment section to try and move the needle to convince us that less is more. Comparing our memory to other systems' memory actually isn't equivalent. Actually, 8 gigabytes on an M3 uh, MacBook Pro is probably analogous to 16 gigabytes on other systems. And the more you buy, the more you save. Work with me here. The more you buy, the more you save. That's right, work with me here. The more you buy, the more you save. But this is all just untrue. We just get absolute trash as normal and normal as luxurious. My wife is using this phone every day for everything. Had not ever experienced any lack of features, except of 64 gigs of SSD storage. But this phone has micro SD expansion slot, and it can easily be mitigated. And if you are broke right now, and never have used such device, but you still think about installment and credits with extra bank interest, I highly suggest to invest your money somewhere else. For example, your own small business or production. Earn more money naturally. And buy such devices only if this won't hurt your wallet. There is no FOMO. You are missing nothing. Of course, these devices take slightly better videos, photos, more fast and give you pleasant feelings. But everything in this virtual game have diminishing return, and it gets to the point where you spend 300 to 1000 percent more for only 10 to 30 percent quality increase. Hope this was helpful. Subscribe for the future. Have a very extraterrestrial day. See you in the cosmos.